Hey, g'day everybody, and welcome to part one in a multi-part series where I'm going to create my own map. Uh, in the future, I'm hoping to put in all of the stuff like the Power Stone Islands and Ghost Ship and all the rest of it. But for now, here in part one, we're just looking to create a one by one grid with a single island that we can spawn into and actually show that we've got a working grid. Uh, so you'll need to download yourself the server grid editor, and once you've actually launched that, you'll create a new project. Now with the create new project interface, now, there's not much that you need to change in here. You want a one by one in terms of the cells. The cell size is 1.4 million. If you go larger than that, apparently it hurts it quite a lot. Uh, there's a few other little bits and pieces, like column UTC can be to zero. You might as well pick JPEG in here. We're going to change more of that later on, but for now that one's fine. And I've seen people tick the UTC. I don't really know if it does anything, but you might as well just tick it. Everything else, leave it blank. And we create our map. All right, and here we have our grid. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. There is a help section where you can see all the different key combinations that you might want to be using. And so to distinguish our grid so it's nice and easy to see, we're going to pick a water tile, which just gives it a bit of a color in the background. All of these have different styles of colors that they've been using in the current official portal map, but the instinct world seems to be the one that they used on the Maelstrom map. And all it does is give you a water tile in the background uh, for something to look at. Uh, from here, we're going to need to control click and that will bring up the edit server interface. So with this interface, pretty much just give your grid a name. I'm just going to call it A1. The IP address is going to be your external IP address that you actually use uh, from your modem if you're building something at home or if you have a server that's being hosted, you need to know what the IP address is of your server. Uh, with the ports, um, you just need to avoid the seamless data port range which starts from 27,000. Um, in my case, I was using 27,500 and my game port, I was using quadruple seven. Each of these ports, if you're doing it from your own home servers, you need to make sure that port forwarding is turned on for all of these numbers. If port forwarding is not turned on, uh, you won't be able to see your server. And with the seamless data port, this is the port that actually gets information delivered back to your server from the Atlas servers. And so you need that one to actually work or things like your map, your in-game map won't work if that seamless data port doesn't work. It's very, very important. Uh, other than that, we can pretty much leave most of these things left alone. I don't have any templates. So that's things like the, whether it's a temperate region and all that kind of stuff, it's like the biomes. Um, you can set a lot of the things here, whether it's actually free ports and all the rest of that. Um, from other templates, I'm going to just leave that alone as well. Uh, the only thing I want to do in here now is to set a home server. By ticking the home server, it means that you can actually spawn in the grid. And from here, we can save. All right, so we now have our single grid, all the ports are set up, and we need to add ourselves an island. Now, I looked up on the exist, one of the existing maps, and one of the free ports was KKTRE. So we go KKTRE. There it is. All right, so we just have to drag that onto our map. Uh, I think, yeah, right click, you can zoom, basically pivot it to however you want. All right, done. And we should now be able to control click on that to get ourselves the edit island interface. The only thing that you'll be interested, if you want to have named spawn point regions, you need to configure this spawn point region override. Just change it to zero. And that's basically the start of an array. So for every spawn point you have on the map, you basically start from zero, then a one, then a two, then a three, and that will allow you to set spawn regions and actually give it a name. And so in here, I can now edit my spawn regions. And the very first one is going to be home region. And the cell is zero, zero, save. And so that's basically going, all right, it will go, what is my first override? Zero, it will then look up the first server in the spawn regions, that's my zero. That's my one, so on and so forth. And it will name that as home region when you actually spawn into the game. That's that done. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to do anything else. The only other thing that uh, you would want to do is when you export this, it will export whatever you have visible as your map. And so all this A1, the name, the IP address, everything like that, that's all going to be there. So if you want a nice clean map that you're going to see in game, you need to turn those off. So before we can export, you need to save your file to actually give it a name, because if you haven't saved it, it doesn't have a name to export, and it's basically like a blank field and it won't actually give you any kind of an export. So save your file, open it again, 
because if, one, if you're doing it just from creating, I've already saved this in the background a couple of times. Open it back up, it now has a name that it's working with. You will then be able to go to export all, it will default to the export folder, and bam. This one will be nice and quick because it's just a single grid with a single island. Now, in that particular folder, if I go back to the exports, we now have the one by one example. But in this example folder, we've only got the JPEG files. You actually also need the PNG files if you want the map in game to work. And this is where it gets a little bit annoying because there's a, currently a bug. So um, if you're watching this and maybe they fixed it, uh, this is a bug that we're currently having to deal with. If you go into here and change it to PNG, it doesn't actually change it to PNG and export any of the files. It just keeps exporting the JPEG files. So you actually close the application, you go into the projects where your file lives, you edit your server grid file and you look for the map extension or map images extension, change that to PNG, save that. When you open up the editor again, don't change anything. So we load our project, we don't change anything and we export again. Done. And now when we go into the export folders, we can actually see we've got JPEG and PNG files, which is what we wanted. So now I'm going to copy all of those and I'm going to take them to where my server lives. So here's my Atlas server. Go into the shooter game folder and we can see the existing server grid JSON files. We're going to remove those and rename the ones that we have to be just server grid. Done. Next, you will need to have your um, launching utility. And you can go to the trouble of having a look on the wiki and things like that to create your own batch file for launching your server if you like. Uh, or maybe you have controls because you're using a, an online host. Um, in my case, because I'm running it, I'm going to be using something like Atlas Server Update Utility. And then there's also Atlas uh, Server Control is another one. Atlas Server Control seems a bit simpler, whereas this one's a little bit more complicated. Okay, if you're launching your own server and you have this command prompt, you're pretty much looking for finish startup log processing. Uh, and that means that basically everything's done. Full startup, 109 seconds, all done. And so now we can launch the game. Now, to guarantee that you'll actually find your server in Steam, you can actually go under View Servers. And in here, you'll basically have a list of your favorite servers. You can add a server in here by typing in your IP address and the port for your server, and that will add it as a favorite in the game. That's actually here in my list. There's 59.167.161.129 with a 27.500 address. If I refresh that, we'll actually see that now it is there, A1. The Atlas Ocean Map, now that's actually resolved that it's up and running. So we can get rid of that. Go into the game itself, join online. I've got this defaulting to my favorites, and we can actually see Atlas World. And Atlas World actually comes from the file itself. Uh, you can change the name of that so it appears as something else, but I didn't bother changing it this time around. We create our character, Skarvig, and we'll notice here at the top, Home Region. So that's the name that I gave my uh, spawn point, and so it's basically done. And we create our Pathfinder. And here we are. We are at our free port. Or well, be it that um, this was not actually set with the uh, default free port settings, but we can go into here. We can actually see in the Atlas, I have a map. The fog of war is working and we can see the island that I placed slightly off to the side and diagonal to the center. And so everything appears to be working just fine. Uh, however, there is really nothing in the game. Um, yeah. There's no, nothing to do, there's no other islands to sail towards. And I'm not sure if I can get metal, but given that this is not actually set to a, I'll grab a few things. We'll just see whether metal's working because I didn't set this to a, uh, a free port, so metal might actually work. I don't know. <laughs>
It does get metal. I suspect that if you set the uh, the the region to actually freeport, it'll end up inheriting all the freeport settings that um, the live map actually has, or the official map has. Anyway, that's pretty much the end of it. We've created a very very basic map. We've made it work. We can actually see that it functions well in the game itself, and we have the in-game map on top of that, which is very very good to see. At least in the next episode, part two. We will expand the map. I'm probably going to make a 5x5 five five, and I want to put all the power stones in there, so on and so forth. But um, yeah, we'll start expanding on the map in part 2, adding all the islands and potentially start putting in some routes and things like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, uh, potentially what you'd like to see created on a server. If you've got questions of um, how particular parts of it work, things like that. Alright, thanks for listening in and I'll catch you in the next one.